Hello, my friends. My name is Ryan Freeman. Thank you for coming to episode 19 of my first backpacking trip to Europe. If you've lasted this long, congratulations. Thank you for your support. And if you're just tuning in and you, you want to watch the last episode, click that link above. Where I left off, we had just caught a ride with a big opera singer named Helmut Franz. He told us his story. Uh, he was a very successful instructor at the Spanish Riding School as a young man, very handsome, uh, very lucky to have the dream job for any sort of horse rider. The Spanish Riding School, prestigious for people who love horses, and he was one of like a thousand applicants who got this job. It was his dream fulfilled, he's handsome, young man, but unfortunately during a stunt, a horse crushed every bone in his body, he had to give up horse riding, he had a long recovery, became fat, but in his fat recovery, he discovered his voice, he started singing, and one day he was singing at a, a local nude swimming hole, and he coincidentally met a Japanese opera voice instructor who said, Helmut, you got something special. So to make a long story short, Helmut Franz has a terrible accident where he loses his profession, being a, a horse instructor at the Spanish Riding School, somewhat, something that he had always dreamed of his entire life, starts singing, gets discovered, and where we find him now, he has an international opera singing career. He's a tenor who gets flown private jets to Japan, sings in all the major concert halls in Europe, very well off, has a business in Munich, that's where he's going. And he tells us, the next day, if you guys want a free ride to Vienna, I'm going to head back home. So be here. At 9 a.m., he drops us off at this massive fountain right there in the center of Vienna, be here at 9 a.m. tomorrow and you'll get a free ride. We jump out of Helmut Franz's car. My Uncle Bob throws his backpack right next to a table at a cafe and he says, watch my bag. And he runs to the restroom because he had to pee for the last two hours listening to Helmut Franz's story. Eventually comes back. I take my turn. We lock our backpacks up in the train station. Very convenient thing to do so we're nice and free get our key to our locker and start enjoying the day drinking beers flirting with girls and i don't remember everything that happened that day my uncle bob if you're watching this please put down in the comments all of the interesting things that happen uh what i remember most importantly was what happened at night eventually when the supermarkets closed we started buying beers from mcdonald's now it's very late it's uh, maybe 12 30 uh, McDonald's is going to close at 1 a.m. We're just having our last beers. Amazing that I can buy beer in McDonald's. Never saw that uh, until I went to Munich. My Uncle Bob finishes a veggie burger with, and then takes his wrapper. You know, he's a little tipsy. He sees a cute girl and he throws the wrapper right at the cute girl. Boom! Bounces right off of her face. How he got away with that, I have no idea. But... He knew what he was doing, man. He suddenly, she's sitting with us. We're talking. It's obvious my Uncle Bob's crazy about her. She tells us she's from Ecuador. She's studying German. She's 19. And we can gather that she's really intelligent. Uh, but unfortunately, she's less interested in Bob. And she's a little more interested in me. Um, so this was like the first little wedge that appeared. I can see Bob was a little jealous, uh, but anyways, he's a good sport. And she says, oh, I got to catch my last train. And will you please walk me to my train? And I said, yes, because now I was in love. Uh, and so I tell Bob and Bob comes with us, but he stands about five feet back, uh, letting us two lovebirds um, enjoy our company, holding hands. We're stopping along the way, smooching. But poor, poor Bob. I mean, I was... This is none of this is Bob's fault. And I think God, Bob even introduced me to Olga, but I fell in love pretty quickly and she fell in love and we were enjoying this romantic walk to the train station. And Bob was giving us our space, but I could feel the tension as well. Sorry, it's a hot day in LA. Um, 
So eventually we get to the train station. It's now past 1 a.m. And I tell Bob, okay, I'm just going to walk her down to her platform. I'll be right back. And Bob, at this point, he can see that I've sort of fallen head over heels for Olga. He can see that this Ecuadorian girl has cast a spell on me and that he has somehow lost the the power over his dynamic buddy. And he's thinking about that ride to Vienna the next day with Helmut Franz. And he says, Ryan, I don't think you're going to make tomorrow. I don't, I'm going to be at that fountain at 9 a.m., but I don't know about you. He thinks I'm going to disappear with Olga and he'll never see me again. But he's going to definitely make that ride with Helmut Franz. And I said, I'm going to be there, Bob. I'm just walking her down to her platform for her to catch her last train. And he's looking at me, you know, he's drunk, he's a little upset that, you know, I'm with Olga, uh, or he's a little dubious about my intentions and about our trip and whatnot. And I say, just wait here, Bob, I'll be right back. This is not at a time where we have cell phones and we can just call one another if we get split up. If we get split up, you know, it, it becomes a bit of a challenge to find each other. Anyways, I go walk Olga down to the train state, down the steps to her platform, and uh, there's no one in the train station. That's because there's no more trains. She's missed her train to get back to her university. What do you do when you've missed your train and you're standing next to this young American guy? Speaking about Olga. Well, you start making out. So we made out for about 20, 30 minutes. And then eventually I thought, oh, what about Bob? So I say, we better go find my uncle. So we walk back up the steps and my uncle's not where I left him. Darn it, Bob, where did you go? I remembered he didn't look very optimistic about me. Uh, he looked very skeptical about my intentions of uh, continuing this hitchhiking trip. And now Olga's lost her chance to get back to university and my uncle split and skedaddled. And now I'm stuck with Olga in the middle of Munich. The town's deserted. Everyone's gone home to go to sleep. But here we are without my Uncle Bob. So what do we do? We start smooching and we start walking around the city. And I end up having one of the most romantic nights of my life. If you've ever watched a film with Ethan Hawke, and it's I think it's called Until Sunset. It's where he just walks around with a woman having the most fabulous conversations in Europe as a young backpacker. Uh, and having this romantic, very beautiful night of walking around a city. That was exactly what happened with me and Olga. We held hands, kissing, talking, and absolutely had one of the most magical nights that I could have even, that I couldn't have planned for. Um, and we were looking for my Uncle Bob. We would look around, but we weren't looking too hard. We weren't worried. We just casually walked around Munich and poked our head around. No, there's a bum. There's a street sweeper. No, Uncle Bob. It was pretty empty. We walked past these churches, these amazing, I don't know if they're Gothic or what era they're from, but these gnarly churches with these statues at night. You know, it's past 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. You know, it's really, really late. It was so cool. Uh, and we're talking and, and, and finding out so much about each other. And we realize that we're kind of on opposite ends of the philosophical spectrum, particularly when it comes to the topic of fate. I was obsessed with fate. Bob had brought me to a palm reader that I talked about in one of the earlier episodes. Uh, I had seen a lot of synchronistic happenings on my trip that made me start to believe that there is a fate and a destiny. When Paul left and I started to discover things about myself, I had this intuition that perhaps it was my fate to travel alone. And so I was trying to tell Olga, no, fate is a thing. Destiny is a thing. She was like, well, what's your logical explanation for it? And I said, I just feel it, right? She was very logical and rational. She was a science, uh, scientific materialist. She needed clear cut evidence and proofs to believe in something, whereas I, uh, and still am, even though I do like science and I do like evidence-based approaches to knowledge, uh, sometimes I do believe in the power of um, 
mystical insight intuition. <laughs> Judge me how you will, but, but I do. And so we're sort of on the opposite sides of this. And I'm telling her, it's my fate to travel alone. Look at everything that's happened. I've lost all these people on my trip, you know, uh, Annie, Catherine, Paul, uh, and now my, even my uncle Bob. It's my destiny to travel alone. I know it. I feel it somewhere deep inside of me beyond my brain. Brain's capacity to find the reason. I just feel it. And she says, no, no, no. But so we're having this little cute discussion about, you know, life while we're smooching, while we're walking past these, these gorgeous uh, examples of German architecture, looking for my Uncle Bob, but not finding him, not looking too hard anyways. Eventually it's 4.30 and we find ourselves in some famous park uh, in, in Munich. And we decide to go to this gazebo and there's this howling sort of anarchist, nihilist, German guy who's obviously very drunk, who might, who looks like he's just bleeding his heart out. He's writing poetry. He tells us some of his poetry. He speaks in German. It was kind of a cool, cool moment. Uh, kind of that sort of cliche poet howling to the moon, writing his verses uh, on the edge of despair and ecstasy. We find a nice spot on the grass not too far away from him, lay down and fall and have a little romance and fall asleep uh, for about 20 minutes. Wake up uh, as the sun comes up, so it's now about 6 a.m., and we start wandering back towards the train station uh, where me and my uncle had stashed our backpacks earlier the previous day. Still can't find him, and I go, I just don't know what happened to my Uncle Bob. He did seem a little pissed off that I met you, but this is so crazy. Uh, where is he? Well, we get to the train station and uh, and I'm still we're still enjoying these last moments. And then I get to the locker. And just as I get to the locker, it was like perfect timing. My Uncle Bob turns a corner and he goes straight to the locker, puts the key in, pulls out his backpack, puts his backpack on pulls out a bunch of plums that we that he had uh, taken from the farm the previous uh, day or two that we had stored, puts them in my hand and says, I don't need this. I got robbed last night. I have just, I've lost my passport. I've lost 1,500 euros, something like that. I have just enough money to get back to Rosemary in Switzerland. I gotta go. And so I couldn't even get the story of what happened to him. He just literally did all of that right away. And then I looked at Olga and I said, what were we talking about? I was telling you it was my fate that I was supposed to travel alone. It's my destiny to travel alone. You don't believe in destiny. Look what happened. Look at the timing. We look for him all night. He comes right as we arrive at the lockers and tells me now, Ryan, you're alone. Good luck. Afirasen. And he got robbed and now he's gone. I mean, it all happened so fast. So I tell her I have to catch that ride. I have to catch that ride to Vienna. That's my fate. I got to go on with this journey with or without Bob. Kissed her. Goodbye as the sunrise was just coming through the glass ceiling at the train station. And I head to the fountain and catch that ride. Now, I will uh, tell you that later on, uh, I do end up talking to Bob and finding out what happens happened. He had uh, given up on me. He thought I was gone, thought I was not going to uh, last. And so he went eventually uh, to the train station to sleep. Because the train station is usually a place for a lot of travelers to sleep if there's no more hotels or they just get stuck or stranded. And he falls asleep, you know, and he had a lot to drink. And when he wakes up uh, in the morning, he saw that someone had rifled through his money belt, which is that safety, uh, safety bag that you usually wear below your pants. Someone had opened it up, taken his passport and all of his money, unfortunately. Um... So, looks like, 
Looks like I'm the one who caught that ride, not you, Uncle Bob. No, I'm just joking. Uh, I felt bad because... <sighs> but, you know, I really do believe in fate, and it worked out how it worked out. And, and, the rest, and then in a couple episodes, I'm going to tell you an example of fate and destiny that really cinched it for me. Um, so in the next episode, I'll tell you about that ride to Vienna and what happens there. And will I ever make it to the Czech Republic? Who knows? Thank you for watching. My name's Ryan.